A warm welcome to you all this evening and thank you once again for joining us today on this episode of Dinner Guide. My name is Chef Andy and today we are going to be working on something quite local. We are going to be making a very very simple bean stew. I'm also going to be showing you how to make some brown chapati which is of course something not many of us are accustomed to. But before we begin we'll of course introduce the ingredients just to give you an idea of what to expect for this show. Now from the very front you will require about five to six knobs of uh, cloves of garlic or about half a knob of garlic. You will also require two medium sized onions and two peeled potatoes already in some water. You will also require two whole tomatoes that have pretty much been blended in a blender or you can of course use a grater to get the same consistency. You will also require a handful of some fresh, pass some fresh coriander. Uh, some flour which you will require for dusting and some brown flour which you will be using for your chapatis. You will also require about a quarter cup of some mixed frozen vegetables. This you can be able to buy at your regular retail store. You are also going to require a cup full of some mixed beans. So this is a mixture of some red kidney beans and some red beans that have just been blanched and cooled off. You will also require some stock powder and some salt for your seasoning some water which you'll be able to make your dough with and last but not least some oil to cook with as well. But before we begin a small break and a chance for you all to grab your pens and papers if you're taking notes and we'll catch you after a short break. Welcome back viewers. For those of you who are just tuning in, we are right about ready to start the dish of today, which is our bean stew and our brown chapati. But of course we'll always start with the one that takes the longest to prepare, which of course will be the chapati for the day. So we're going to begin this process very simply by adding about one and a half cups of flour into a mixing bowl. You can of course be able to purchase this locally or you can of course use any particular bowl that you may have in the house, be it plastic, ceramic or glass. And now to that we're going to proceed to add some salt to it. You can of course alternatively also add a bit of uh, sugar to give it a bit of a sweetness but for the fact that we're keeping it nice and healthy for this particular chapati recipe, I'm of course going to be going in with just some salt. I'll also be adding to that a bit of some oil. And very, very importantly, we'll also add some water. But before we do so, very important to tamper your water. And this is a very simple process. So what we basically mean by tampering would be uh, reheating a bit of some water. This is basically allowing it to get to anywhere between hot and cold. So it should actually be lukewarm and pleasant to use. And what happens is this basically allows for you to work on the dough a little easier. Remember cold water will of course also change the consistency and the product of what we're making. So for, some, for, for making chapatis particularly, always be sure to use a bit of some hot and cold water. It will of course make it much easier for you to work through your dough. Now as we allow that water to heat up very briefly, I will also mention that I have used about a quarter cup of all-purpose flour to, three, to three, and a, three quarter cups of flour, that's of course bran flour. And this is basically to allow that gluten to give us a nice consistency to the chapati. Remember using brown flour on its own will actually make your chapati quite brittle and weak. So just to give it that beautiful texture and of course have it a little malleable, We've of course incorporated just a little bit of some all-purpose flour to be able to of course give it that kick of gluten and of course allow for some beautiful soft chapatis. Right now once your water is heated up, just use your finger and make sure to check that it's actually not too hot because remember your dough being very hot will of course make it harder for you to knead your dough and of course work through the ingredients. So we're going to begin the process by 
fluffing up our mixture by hand. And this of course allows for you to get a nice even spread of salt around your dough. And once that's done, proceed to make a well right in the center of your bowl. And by a well would basically mean a small hole in the center, which will of course aid you in mixing in the water a little easier. So to that add about a half of your cup at this stage and proceed to fold in your flour by of course tucking from the sides and of course bringing the flour towards the centermost part of your bowl and then just using your fingertips proceed to work your mixture very very lightly of course allowing for the flour and the water to combine very very gently and once that has now reconstituted into one solid mixture proceed to just combine that by hand of course wiping down around the sides of your bowl as well this will of course aid in making sure that you don't waste any of your mixture you can alternatively also just dust some flour around the sides and what this does it basically becomes almost like a wipe or a cushion to aid you in combining everything together in your bowl and once that's done, just proceed to knead your dough for your first process. Of course, constantly wiping the sides, making sure to incorporate all of your mixture. And just proceed to knead as you would for regular chapati. Of course, always using the inner side of your knuckles. and proceed to knead the dough for anywhere between two to three minutes. And this is basically just to activate the gluten in the dough. You can also rub some flour on your hands. And this will basically just reduce the stickiness of the dough around your hands and your knuckles, making it of course much easier to finish off kneading your dough. And just continue to tuck in as you proceed to go around. Of course, always making sure to wipe your bowl completely clean as you work towards the, first, the finish of the first part of the dough. And once that's complete, you can of course proceed to just reconstitute that into a nice firm bowl. And you of course have two options at this stage to cover your dough, which is of course by using some cling film, which is much easier to work with. Or of course if you don't actually have this, or you actually have some that actually ran out before you got to use it, you can also of course dampen a cloth in some cold running water on the sink, and then cover your dough just to make sure that it doesn't actually proceed to dry off. So give that a nice tight covering. And all you're going to do now is allow your dough to set and rest for a little bit, of course, which will, which will come back to a little later and will, of course, proceed to roll and cook. But very important to rest your dough, giving just a bit of time for your gluten to activate. And once that's done, proceed to discard the rest of your water and you can, of course, hold on to the flour just a little bit longer because this will of course aid you in, of co in rolling out your chapatis a little later on in the show. But before we get there, very importantly to begin the rest of our ingredients as well, just of course to make sure to save quite a bit of time. So begin the process by heating, up, heating a pan or a heavy base pot of your choice. And using a very sharp knife, we're going to begin to peel our onion so I'm only going to use one of the pieces for this recipe, just to give it a nice beautiful ratio. You can cut a line right through the sides, but of course not so far deep in. This will of course aid you in lifting up that onion skin and making it much easier to peel. 
So proceed to do the same thing right up to the end. And proceed to discard the peel. And very simply proceed to chop that finely. And of course, very important to mention, you can alternatively use a little bit of white onion as well for this recipe, just to give it a nice, beautiful balance of flavors. And you can also incorporate a bit of some leeks into this recipe as well. This will, of course, always aid in giving a nice, beautiful balance and, of course, array of flavor. So just finish chopping that off. Right, once that's done, proceed to add some oil to your cooking pot. We're going to add about a tablespoon just to aid in browning our onions more evenly. And just proceed to add those into your pot. And using a wooden spoon, proceed to mix that through right up until your onions are sweated out. And this you can always get the best results by always allowing your, uh, your pan to heat up a little bit. This will of course also aid in browning the onions a little faster, saving you quite a bit of time in preparation. So once your onions are sautéed and sweated, proceed to add in your beans and begin to mix through. Now at this stage we're basically allowing our beans to just begin to dehydrate. Remember these were pretty much cooked and then cooled off. They have of course been drained so very, much, very, very important to make sure that you allow them to hydrate as they come to the final and last part of their cooking stage. And now while that continues we're also going to be adding to that our blended tomatoes. And this, as I mentioned a little earlier, if you don't, of course, have a blender that you can be able to use at home, you can be able to use a grater to achieve the same consistency. All you need to do is chop your tomato in half and using your finest attachment, proceed to grate very, very finely right up until you have an almost juicy consistency. But of course, very important to also have a little bit of some skin of some chunks of the, pot of the tomatoes. This will of course also aid in giving you a nice heavy gravy. Right, so as that continues to come up to the boil, we'll proceed to add our mixed vegetables at this stage. Now remember these are easy to purchase late. Uh, in this modern day, you can be able to purchase this much, much easier from your retail store. And you can be able to find those in your uh, freezer section of the supermarket. You will be able to find a big array of vegetables that you can be able to save time when cooking. And of course you can also incorporate into a very, very simple bean dish like the one we're making today. And it will also give a nice beautiful addition to color and of course to flavor. Right, so while that continues... I'm also going to grab a bit of some garlic. So I'm going to use about three cloves for this stage. And what I'm going to be using the garlic for is basically to flavor or give a bit of uh, creativity to our chapatis. Remember on most occasions you will find chapatis are very, very bland and have no creativity whatsoever. And now for this particular recipe, I'm basically going to allow you to see a very, very simple technique of flavoring and giving a bit of life to a brown chapati. Remember, a lot of us try and avoid eating brown chapati for the fact that it is considered much of a nutritional uh, deficiency. For those, of course, suffering from gluten or people with inadequacy to, contain, to consume gluten, but remember, you can always change something much more, something uh, considered very nutritional to be also very, very easy to work with. And for that, I'm going to be using some garlic just to give that a bit of flavor. And of course, to mask 
that very, very harsh um, sharpness of the bran flour. So begin by chopping up your garlic into some very thin slices. Once that's done, proceed to just use your knife to chop your garlic a little finer. Proceed to reconstitute everything to the center as you continue. Of course, making it much easier to mince your garlic by the knife. Once that's minced, we're going to move that into a bowl and we'll of course incorporate that to the chapati. But very also important to give it a bit of color as well. So I'm going to grab as well a bit of some coriander and this will of course go into the chapati as well, giving it a nice beautiful spark of color and freshness. Very important to mention as well, if you're going to be adding your stems, be sure to chop them as finely as possible. Remember, it is also very unpleasant to pick out pieces of uh, herb or ingredient from your food. Right, once that's chopped, proceed to add that to the bowl with your garlic. And we can allow that to sit on the side right up until the time we'll require. Now to bring your attention back to your bean stew, your water is almost completely evaporated at this stage. But remember your beans are also not completely softened out, so we will proceed to add a bit of water. This of course will aid in allowing for the beans to cook into a more softer consistency. And of course it will also help in cooking the potatoes down. So to finish this process, begin by grabbing the potato. And we're going to chop this up into some quarter inch cubes. So begin by slicing some nice thick chunks from your potato. And you should basically be looking at a size somewhat like that and proceed to do the same for the rest of your potato. And proceed to do the same thing for the second piece. Of course, chopping it in half will always make it a little easier. Then turn it to the side and proceed to chop into your quarter inch sizes. And also very important to mention, always try and make sure to have a more consistent cut every time. For this will allow for you to get a more even cooking and of course it will also aid in presentation. So proceed to add your potatoes and give that a mix. And last but not least, very important to season as well. So I'm going to be using some stock powder for this. I'm going to add two teaspoons to the mixture. And of course add also one teaspoon of some salt. And all we need to do at this stage is allow this to come to the boil, allow for the potatoes to cook fully and the beans to soften up. And that, of course, will drive us to the last and final part of the plating. But before we do so, remember we still have some chapati to recap on. So do give us this chance to give you a chance to take a break. And when we do come back, I'll take you through the process of infusing these beautiful ingredients into your chapati. And we can also proceed to the preparation and final part of the plating. So please don't touch that dial. We'll be right back.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Now, if you were with us before the break and you missed out on the beginning part of the show, remember you can always recap through our YouTube page. That's Brand Plus TV Kenya. And, of course, you can also be able to recap on this and many other episodes that you may have missed out on the recent past. Now, to start our, process, our, second, our next process, of course, of our chapati making, I'm, of course, going to now move the dough out of the bowl completely and very simply begin by dusting your working area. And now, remember this, we're going to be rolling out for chapati purposes, so very important to always make sure to squeeze out as much air as possible from your dough before you begin. And right after dusting over the top, proceed to dust your hands as well. And of course, rub some flour on your rolling pin. And very, very simply begin to roll out your dough. Making sure to turn it occasionally as you proceed. And dust very, very little by little as you proceed as well. Turn over once more and dust very lightly. Next up, proceed to roll out your dough. Of course, making sure to have a more even consistent leveling of your dough. Always use the inner part of your rolling pin to spread out the dough. And of course, use the outermost thinner parts of your rolling pin to of course just even out the thickness. Right, simple as that. You can turn that over once. And very simply proceed to add your oil. And I'm just going to drizzle it very, very thinly along the surface, top surface of my dough. And once that's done, very easy by hand, begin from the center working in a very slow circular motion, making sure that the oil touches most of the parts of your dough and stretch it out to the most outer parts of your dough as well. And very simply, all you need to do now is begin to roll this just as you would for, for a, a Swiss roll. Of course, this will also aid in making sure that you remove any excess oil that you may have spread onto the dough and just proceed to roll it right up to the very end and of course allow for any excess oil to pour out at this stage and you can easily clean that off with a bit of some kitchen towel. Right, once that's done, we're going to now begin to portion out our dough. So I'm just going to use the first piece I cut out to measure out the rest and you should actually be able to achieve some very even pieces by this stage. And now you can proceed to reconstitute your pieces into balls once more. Those should be actually almost golf size in size by this stage. And anything bigger than that you should actually proceed to reduce in size by pinching off a bit of the dough and of course making sure that most or all of your pieces are pretty much the same size. All right, proceed to do so right up to the very last piece. And once that's beautifully reconstituted, you can still get a bit of that oil tucked in by of course folding inwards and reconstituting and that will of course make sure that your oil does not spill out. All you need to do now is begin by heating up a pan. Dust your working surface once more. And once done we're going to begin our rolling process. So once more a bit of flour over the top. Begin by pressing down very firmly by holding the inner parts of your rolling pin. And once you have just a little bit of your chapati rolled out at this stage, 
while continuously dusting your surface proceed to repeat the same process right up until you've got a nice sizable piece of chapati proceed to turn over and continue to do the same of course making sure at this stage to pretty much reduce the amount of flour you're dusting as you are working towards the final part of your rolling process and of course the oil will also aid in making it much easier for you now once you're done stretching out your dough you can stretch out your arms as well and by reaching out to the furthest corners or furthest ends of your rolling pin should actually be much easier for you to level out your dough and we can begin now the first process of cooking by allowing that to continue onto a hot pan and all you're going to do at this stage is proceed to do the same thing for the rest of your pieces Of course, always beginning from the very center with your hands closest to the inside. And this will also, at many cases, if you do have very small hands, it will also aid in giving you quite a bit of stability and make your work quite a little easier. Proceed to dust once more over and above. your dough and just proceed to roll that out of course looking at finding a more round cylindrical shape dust once more if it's still quite sticky and still attaching to your rolling pin Proceed to finish that off by, of course, making sure that your edges are pretty much as thick as the sides of your chapati. And once this is now nicely puffed up, you'll be able to see some air pockets pop up from the top. Begin to check at the base. And once you've got some beautiful dark spots, proceed to turn that over and basically allow for the second part of your cooking process. You can at this stage also grab a plate which will of course be able to turn your chapatis on too. Alright, once that's cooked for about another extra minute, proceed to remove from the heat. And we'll proceed to cook the second piece. Now you can also give a check on your beans by giving that a stir, breaking the skin of your tomatoes right over the top. And you'll definitely be able to know when this is ready as soon as you begin to press the potatoes along the sides of your pot. And once those begin to break, then this is your call to turn your heat off completely at this stage. And just allow your dish to continue to mellow out and combine in flavor. Now I did also mention that we are going to be infusing our chapati so I've actually saved just the last two pieces to do so and it's very very simple begin by just pressing your dough down by your fingertips combine your garlic and your coriander by hand by mixing that in your bowl and you can just spread over about a teaspoon on each piece and all you're going to do now is almost fold in your garlic and coriander inside your bowl. And you should actually be able to reconstitute that very, very simply. And once that's done, we're pretty much going to do the same thing as we did for the other two. And you'll of course be able to see the difference in appearance even as you proceed to roll out your third and fourth piece so once more 
begin at the center. So see to turn occasionally, dusting very, very lightly over the top and on your surface. And proceed to cook the same way right up to the last and final process. Turn over once more. And you will realize that this may actually be quite a little hard to roll out, so be sure to work as gentle as you possibly can just to make sure that you, act, you don't proceed to break the surface of your chapati. And proceed to do the same, giving you enough time to roll the last and final piece, just as you did for the first three. And of course, remember, you can use many other different variety of ingredients. Pumpkin is also a very, very good addition to chapatis. Uh, herbs will always work to your advantage as well. A bit of garlic, ginger will also give a beautiful pungency to your chapati. But of course, if you're looking for specks of color, coriander is my personal favorite. But you can also add any particular bits of green veg matter that you may be able to come across on your end as well. Right, so those two are now rolled off. We're just going to finish the first cooking stage of the two, which will of course allow us to take a very, very short break before we proceed to plating, and of course give us just a bit of time to finish off cleaning this counter and finishing off our chapatis. But please don't touch that dial. You'll definitely want to see the last and final part of the show where I will also give you some serving suggestions and as well some plating tips. So please don't touch that dial. We'll see you in a little while. viewers for those of you who are just tuning in we're right at the last and final part of the process which will of course take us to plating and now to start us off I will begin by plating up our beautiful bean stew which I'll be using a ladle for now begin the process by moving your mixture into your bowl and about two ladle spoonfuls will do. Very, very simple. Now next up, we'll also proceed to finish off our chapatis. Very simply, by adding a bit of oil to a pan. And you can begin to move your chapatis onto the hot pan. And you basically just use your hands And by spreading and twisting and spinning your chapatis, this allows for you to really get a nice even coating of oil onto each side. So very, very simple. Pour a bit of oil on the sides of your pan and very simply proceed to move those around. And after about three to four seconds, proceed to lift the pieces over the top and turn the one at the bottom over and you're basically going to proceed to do the same adding little bits of oil of course always making sure that you don't have too much oil in your pan and of course by tilting your pan you should actually not have any oil spilling out at this stage 
And once that is done, we're going to lift the first three pieces over and proceed to remove the piece we began with. And you're basically going to continue to do the same, of course, adding oil as you go. And of course, very important to mention, proceed to do this at low heat, making sure to not overcolor your chapatis or of course cook them bland, which would basically mean that you'll get some very, very brittle pieces. Right, once more after about five, six seconds of cooking, proceed to turn over and proceed once more to drizzle some oil over the edges and proceed to cook just the same way right until you get to the last and final one. And of course this process always aids in making sure that you don't burn your fingers or you burn your hands. And basically what it does is it allows for the cooler, pizza, uh, the cooler pieces to heat up a little much softer towards the top as of course your heat will continue to raise as you proceed to cook. The pieces on top will of course aid you in making sure that you don't burn your fingertips and of course makes it a little much easier to spread your chapatis around your pan without burning yourself. But you can of course be able to do so even by using a pair of tongs or a piece of cloth if of course you're not very accustomed to doing so by hand you will of course still be able to get the same result nonetheless. So as we work towards the last and final piece, you can drizzle some oil over this piece in particular. Move it around the pan. Remember this will be quite hot, so be sure to not be tempted to touch the surface of your pan with your bare hands as you will actually burn your fingertips. Right, as we finish off that last piece, I'm also going to turn over the pieces onto my chopping board and proceed to turn your heat off completely. And while having each piece over the other, we're going to begin to slice those into some workable sizes. So begin by slicing through the center once. Proceed to assemble and place over the other batch and very, very simply continue to slice those into quarters. And once done, begin to assemble them over the surface of your chopping board and very, very simply proceed to move them onto your plate and you can basically just open those up into the shape of a flan. And that, ladies and gentlemen, brings us to the last and final part of this very, very simple dish of the day, which is some bean stew and some brown chapati. Of course, one that was infused with some garlic and some coriander, and the other that was pretty much plain. So I do thank you once again for tuning in this far. I do also thank you for the comments that you've been sending in and we'll of course continue to try to air some beautiful options that you of course uh, mentioned to us. And do remember that if you are also looking at learning something that we haven't presented on the show, you can of course feel free to write back to us and we'll definitely get back to you on the same. So thank you once again and until the next episode, God bless and bye-bye.